Hello, welcome to this lesson of the Laplace Transform Tutor. Let's go ahead and get some additional practice with inverting Laplace Transforms, and then off in the next section we'll finally use all this stuff to solve some real problems. So let's continue building our skills here. What if you had a function of s that looked like uh, 1 over s squared plus 3, and you wanted to find its inverse Laplace Transform? So the first thing you would do is you go over here and see if you can find something similar. Well, this isn't quite right because what we have in our problem is 1 over s squared uh, minus a number or plus a number. So obviously this is not squared, so this cannot be used. This, for the same reason, doesn't match it. This doesn't really match it. Although we do have 1 over s squared, we have a minus uh, or a plus 3 in our problem, so this doesn't work. Um, this clearly does not work because we have, uh, in our problem, we have 1 over s squared plus something. We don't have an s on the top. So we get down to the bottom. This kind of does look like something we might be able to use because we have a 1 on the top and s squared plus uh, 3. But it doesn't quite look like beta squared, so we're not sure if, if it works, but I think we're going to be able to use this. So let's just kind of write that down. What we're going to use, I'll just write it down so you have it in front of you, uh, Laplace transform inverse of 1 over s squared plus beta squared, and we just say that's 1 over beta sine beta t. All right. Well, what you need to do is just recognize that in this particular problem, to make this look like this, what we're basically going to say is that beta is equal to the square root of 3. If we assume that beta is equal to the square root of 3, then what we have here actually is beta squared, which matches exactly with what we have here. So it doesn't have to be a perfect square in there. I know it's pretty obvious if you see a 4 there or a 9, then you can clearly say, well, beta is 2 or beta is 3. But if you have any number here, you can just take its square root and call it beta. Um, and it'll still match the form of what we have over here. All right, so knowing that, that, then we can just write the answer down directly. And we can say, well, if this is true, then 1 over square root of 3, meaning 1 over beta here, times the sine of square root of 3 times t. And you can put some parentheses here to show that that's all inside of there. And this is the answer. 1 over square root of 3 sine of square root of 3 times t. Again, we're just comparing it to what we see over there and going accordingly. Now let's do the next problem here. Let's take the inverse Laplace transform of the following larger function, 5 over s plus 1 minus 6 over s squared plus 4 um, plus 1 over s to the fourth. So this is a linear combination. This is a large function. They're linked by pluses and minuses. And we already know from before that we can apply the inverse transform to each term separately. So don't worry too much that it's a long string of terms. We can apply it to each thing separately. Also notice that once we apply it to each guy, we can pull the constants out uh, there. So the way we're going to simplify this is we're going to say that the function of time is going to be working on this one here, since we have a 5, which is just a constant multiplied in there, it could be 5 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1. Make sure you understand that. The 5 just basically comes out. We just carry the minus sign through. Then we can pull the 6 out, because it's just multiplied, and we'll have the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 4. Right, and then we carry this plus sign from here. This Laplace just applies, inverse Laplace applies directly there, 1 over s to the fourth power. So you see, I'm applying to each term, and also as I apply it, I'm pulling any constants out. So now I'm focusing my attention on these individual Laplace transforms, and we just kind of see if we can find a match along the way here. So we say f of t is equal to 5 times. What is this one going to be? We know this one works. 1 over s plus 1 matches exactly with this. However, notice that the way the actual rule is written, this is how you can get tripped up on simple, simple little things. The actual table is written as 1 over s minus lambda. And whatever's here gets thrown up in here. So here we have an actually a plus. So what we actually have is 5 e to the minus 1 lambda. So this is one of those cases where lambda here is actually negative 1. Another way to look at that, or to think about it, is 1 over s plus 1. I'll just do like a little kind of an aside. We'll just do it kind of over here. 
So you can say that one over s plus one is the same as one over s minus negative one. So you can write this as a minus anytime you want. So when you see it written like this, you can immediately match this up because it's written as one over s minus lambda. Then the negative one is what gets stuck inside of the exponent. You don't have to do this every time. You'll get used to seeing it. Basically, if you see one over s minus lambda, the number goes in there. If you see one over s plus lambda, you need to stick a minus one up there. All right, and I'm writing it clearly so you can see what's, what's going on uh, up there. And actually, it's not minus one times lambda, it's actually minus one times t. That's what I meant to write there. So this is negative one times t. Because when we invert, we get a function of time back. All right, now let's move along here. We'll get a six times the inverse transform of this. Let's see if we have something that matches one over s squared plus four. This one matches one over s squared plus four beta is going to be equal to 2, and this is the result, 1 over beta sine beta t. So what I'm going to have is 1 over beta, beta in this case is 2, uh, sine of beta t. We actually said beta was equal to 2, so it would be 2t. And then the final thing we do, we have a plus sign, we're taking the inverse Laplace of this guy, 1 over s to the fourth power, uh, so here n is 4, so it's t to the 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1 factorial. So what we have is t to the 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1 factorial. So we're just plugging in at every step of the way, uh, just making sure that we're doing a correct substitution. I'm going to apologize right now. I've got an extra 5 here that I just wrote down because there's no good excuse for that. So. That comes from nowhere. What we have basically in this step is 5 coming from here. The inverse Laplace of this just gets written as e to the negative 1 times t. Everything else should be the same uh, without any problems here. So what we have in our final answer is 5 times e to the minus t coming from this. Here we have 6 over 2 giving us 3 times the sine of 2t. And over here what we have is t to the third power over. And then you have 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 factorial is going to be 3 times 2 is 6. So the final answer is 5e to the minus t minus 3 times sine 2t plus t cubed over 6. And that's basically the final answer. And in both of these problems, none of them are hard. But you, you actually see that I actually made a couple of mistakes myself. I could easily go back and just do this problem over and remove those. But I think occasionally, especially for simple little things when you're tired or not paying attention and putting an extra five in here or something that doesn't make quite a lot of sense, um, you know, you, you, we're all human. I mean, we all do that kind of stuff. So what you need to do is show your steps explicitly. Notice how I wrote this, this guy out. I have five times e to the negative one t. I didn't have to do this. I could have just written it as negative t. But I wrote it as negative one t to remind me that I put negative one in for lambda times time. Here, I know that you know that 6 times a half is 3, but I didn't simplify it in this step because I want to show myself and remind myself exactly what I did. And the same thing here. I know that you know that 4 minus 1 is 3, so why would I write it this way? Well, I'm doing it to show myself that I'm plugging into that uh, relation that we have, and I'm doing the proper substitution with the exponent of 4 in there. So that then when I go back and try to find a mistake like I just had to do, I can go and trace through it and say, well, that doesn't make sense. It comes from nowhere or whatever it is I'm trying to find, it's much easier to chase down your, your uh, errors when you're showing everything and then on the next line you're simplifying and on the next line you're simplifying like that. So I encourage you to do that as much as you can. Even on the time test, it's going to save you time if you do that. Don't try to skip steps. See, people think, oh, I'll just skip steps and save time. In fact, you'll probably do yourself a disservice by that because then if you get something wrong or you're trying to check, check your work, you're going to have a hard time doing it. So here we're done with getting basic practice with inverse transforms. We've done a lot of basic groundwork. What we're going to do in the next section is learn to solve some real problems so we can see the practicality of using the Laplace transform. So follow me on to the next lesson. We'll solve our first differential equation using the Laplace transform method.